So as you continue your exploration of JavaScript, there's one other technique that really might come in handy as you begin to build more complex websites, and that is using something called Ajax. So, so far in our exploration of JavaScript, we've sort of been limited to doing a couple of really simple things for the purpose of illustration. Like you click a button and something happens, like maybe the color changes on your site or maybe a couple of words change. But the catch is everything we've been doing so far has been client side. It's all happening on our computer. We're never really talking to the outside world. We can, however, talk to the outside world and make changes on our website, have something happen that interact with the server, but maybe it doesn't reload our entire page. We want to create a more pleasant user experience. Ajax allows us to do that. Uh, Ajax used to stand for something called asynchronous JavaScript and XML. That's sort of a backronym. That's not really what it's uh, called anymore. Uh, and actually, most commonly now, uh, instead of XML, we use JSON. But Ajax has just sort of been the name that's kind of stuck um, for the technique. And what Ajax allows us to do is to refresh basically sections of our page without the entire page. And if you're, for example, um, somebody who follows sports, for instance, you might see this if you're uh, on a sports um, website where scores of games that are going on are currently being, are being updated, but the whole page doesn't refresh. That means that the page is basically taking advantage of Ajax to just update small portions of the page. The techniques that you can do with Ajax are pretty limitless. You can do a lot of different things with it. And we're going to focus on a very specific example where, again, we're clicking a button and something happens. But the difference is this time when something happens, we're still making, we're making a server request. We're making an outbound request from our page. It's not just happening on our machine. But you can do things like updating, uh, for example, um, the sports scores on a, on a website that, does, that tracks that information, or your email. You might notice that sometimes like your, when you get a new email, your entire body of your page refreshes to put that new email at the top of your inbox, but the whole page doesn't refresh. That's happening with Ajax as well. But that is just, it's constantly running all the time. It's just basically querying forever. We're, again, just going to focus on clicking a button and something happening. But that's something being not just local to our machine anymore. So in order to do this, we have to create another special kind of JavaScript object called an XML HTTP request. And what this does is it allows us to make it asynchronous, so in a, not at the same time as the refresh of the page or loading the page, but sometime thereafter while we still are on the page. That's what we mean when we say asynchronous. Uh, it allows us to make an asynchronous asynchronous request to a server to get more information. It's actually very easy to create this, fortunately. This line, for example, would create a new XML HTTP request object. And in this case, I'm just calling that XHTTP and assigning it to just a random local variable in JavaScript. Once you have the object, so once you've created it, the first thing you have to do is define an on ready state change behavior. On ready state change is really just a wordy way to describe the steps that are happening when you visit a page. So for example, you click on, you know, you, you maybe you refresh, you're, at a, you're on a page. You refresh the page, it sort of all goes blank for a second, then some of the data starts to populate, and then it stops refreshing and you're ready to go. That's going through a series of different states where it goes from the request hasn't been initiated, to you're sending the request, to the request is received, to the request is on its way back to you, and then the request is complete. Those are, for example, a couple of different state changes that might take place when you're visiting a site. Uh, and it will also be the kinds of state changes that will take place when you're updating a smaller section of your site. Typically, we um, define something that is supposed to happen when the state changes using an anonymous function. And we're going to see an example of this in just a moment. Um, we don't have to give that function a name. We just want it to do something whenever it detects um, some change in the status of loading the site. There are five different states um, that go from 0 to 4. That is the ready state property. So that's part of the on ready state change. It's clearly related. Uh, and those are the what I basically just described, where 0 is the request has not yet been initialized, and 4, which is the end, which is the ultimate goal of a uh, ready state, an on ready state change um, request or an AJAX request, is to get that ready state to 4, which basically means the entire thing has loaded. And hopefully, the status that we get back is 200. Those are the two things we're really caring about. We want to make sure that when our, um, our AJAX request is completed, that the ready state is 4, so the data has been received, and the data was received OK. You may recall 200 being the HTTP code for OK. That was the one we fortunately never saw. We didn't go to a website and get a, you don't go to a website and get a 200, uh, unlike you get a 404, for example. So we want, ultimately, for the ready state to be 4 and the status to be 200. When that's the case, we can then update um, our site. 
Once we have that, we just need to open the request and send the request, and then our site will refresh. Again, we're going to see a very concrete example of this in just a minute. So if it doesn't make sense just now, hopefully it will when we start to see some code and you see how, it, uh, how that interaction takes place for real on a website. There is, I want to point out again, a very slightly different way to do this syntactically using jQuery. And in fact, you will very commonly see nowadays Ajax requests made using jQuery. Uh, we're explicitly showing you the pure JavaScript version of this just so you see it. But as you become more comfortable using jQuery for client-side scripting, for example, for using DOM manipulation or for Ajax request, you'll probably see the syntax of this slightly differently. So here is a JavaScript function that is preparing, opening, and sending an AJAX request. So the first thing I would do is I create my new XML HTTP request. I'm going to, again, assign it to a random variable, this time called AJ for AJAX. Then I'm going to define a function that is going to execute on the ready state changing. So every time the ready state changes, this function will execute. But as you can see, it's only really going to do something eventually once the ready state is 4 and the status is 200. So it's going to, this function will, um, this function will, sorry, get executed every time the state changes, but it's only going to have like a meaningful thing to do once the ready state is 4 and the status is 200. And we'll see what that, we'll see a concrete example of that in a second where we're going to be updating um, a section of our site with different uh, photos and information. Once that is done, we're then going to uh, open our HTT, our, uh, XML requests or AJAX request. Uh, this is just a simple way to do this. Um, we're say, basically creating a GET request of a particular URL. Don't worry about what the true means. And then we're just going to send that request. So again, you'll usually see this written in, um, in jQuery instead of in pure JavaScript. Um, so if you want to learn a little bit about how to do that, you can take a look at this URL here. But for now, let's head into the IDE and see this example in action, making AJAX requests of a server, where the server happens to be running locally on my machine, um, to see how we can change a page asynchronously. All right, so if you download the uh, source code that comes with this short uh, and you open up the uh, index HTML within there, you'll find a page that looks like this called Ajax Test. There's a drop down menu and a section that calls that says information goes here. We'll see what that means in a second. I'm not going to tinker with it yet. I want to show you what's behind the scenes before we take a look. So here is the uh, source code for that. Um, at the top here, I'm just loading a couple of scripts. I'm loading jQuery because I will use a little bit of jQuery in this as well just to give you a little taste of it. Uh, I have my own uh, JavaScript script that I wrote called Ajax.js. We're going to take a look at it in just a second. You'll see that the information goes here that we were just looking at on the site is in, uh, is in a div whose ID is info div. That'll be really important in just a minute. And then I have a form where I have a couple of different options. And when something happens, particularly when the value changes, when I select a different option from the list, I'm going to call this function, cs50info, and I'm going to pass in the parameter this.value. You may recall from our video on JavaScript that this is a way to self-refer to the event that triggered um, the JavaScript function being called in the first place. So this is, a, this is another form of an event handler as opposed to on click. It's on change. And what this is going to do is it's going to allow me to figure out which one of the options triggered the change. And I'm going to capture this dot value. So this is what I mean with value is I'm going to get this piece of information. So if I choose Rob Bowden from this list, basically I'm passing in CS50 info, and then the value that actually gets passed into that function is Bowden. They're all in lowercase, Chan, Malin, and Zlotkova. So those are the different things that will be passed in to that CS50 info function. What does that CS50 info function do? Well, let's take a look at ajax.js. Here is CS50 info. If the name is empty, so if I didn't choose one of the actual options, if I just choose the default option at the top, you might be familiar with this from using drop downs where there's a blank thing and you have to actually pick something, I return. I don't do anything. I don't want to try and do anything fancy. Otherwise, I create an XML HTTP request. We just saw this uh, in the slides a moment ago. And I define a function that is going to wait for the ready state to be 4 and the status to be 200. And when it does, when it's there, what, I, what do I want to do? I want to update H, the uh, HTML inside of the info div. This is the jQuery way to describe that. This is the line of jQuery that you're going to see in this. The rest of it is JavaScript. This is jQuery. 
to whatever I get back from my AJAX request. Remember, I haven't made the AJAX request entirely just yet. That's going to be right down here with the open and send. But when I do, I'm going to get data back and I'm going to update whatever the HTML of info div, which at the beginning was information goes here. That was what was in between the, uh, the div tags. I'm going to change that to whatever I get back in my request. But I'm going to do it without updating the entire page. I'm only going to refresh, so to speak, just that div, just that section of the page. So what, am I, what file am I opening? Well, I'm, op I'm sending a get request for name plus .html. Remember that name is just the name of the value, the uh, variable that's being passed in as a parameter here. So that's what name is. So name is going to be Bowden or Chan, um, Malin or Zlakova. And what is, and apparently I'm going to add .html to the end of it. Well, what does one of these look like? Well, it looks like just kind of a snippet of HTML. It's clearly not entirely correct HTML because I don't have HTML tags on the top and bottom of it. I don't have body tags around it. But it's some little bit of HTML. It has a paragraph with a name, an image tag, and a couple other paragraphs with some information. So let's see this actually in action and see what it does. So right now, I have AJAX test. And remember, when I choose an option, that function is going to execute that CS50 info function, passing in whatever one I choose. So let's choose Zamila. So notice what it did here. It popped in all of that information from our page. There's that Zamila tag. So if we take it, I'll pop back to the IDE for a second. We have a paragraph with her name, an image, class of 2014, and Winthrop House. And indeed, all of that information is now here. But what happens if I change it? I don't want my entire page to refresh, but I do want the content of that div to change. So let's try and switch it to, for example, Rob. And if you look really carefully, and depending on if my computer is a little bit slower or faster, you might quickly see all of the content get deleted and then replaced. That is the asynchronous, asynchronous request happening very quickly. So let's see if we can see it. You might have noticed right there that everything deleted and then everything came back. But now I have new data because I chose a new option from the list. Remember, if I choose select someone, nothing happens. I returned immediately. So I don't, it doesn't go back to information goes here, although I could have written the function differently to do that. But I can just make these different asynchronous requests, and it's going to keep updating the information that I see on the page without refreshing the entire page, just the section that I care about. So this is pretty cool, right? Like Now we can not only change things locally on our machine, like simple things like colors, but we can also now send to send outbound requests to servers. And they don't even have to be servers that are running locally. I could be maybe sourcing information from Yahoo Finance. If I want to pull data from Yahoo Finance asynchronously, maybe I'll do that and load that into my page and have that be some information that constantly gets updated because maybe I have a different way of displaying the data or something. So it's kind of an interesting. Um, it's an interesting new strategy that we have at our disposal. We can send requests locally. We can send requests outbound to other servers and really start to take advantage of creating a better user experience using AJAX. I'm Doug Lloyd. This is CS50.